for the seven. Okay, good. So this says graph the function and analyze it for domain range, continuity, increasing or decreasing behavior, symmetry, boundedness, extrema, asymptotes, and behavior. So let's first take a look at the graph. I need to know where my asymptote is. Where is it here? Anybody? Zero. Why is it not moved from zero? There's no vertical shift, right? That's the only thing that's going to cause that asymptote to move in this situation. So I'm still at zero. Um, let's, this is a calculator problem, right? Is that right? Gray's non-calculator? Yeah. So this is a calculator problem, so I can definitely use it. Um, if I... Yes, you'll have calculator. If I plug in zero here, I get, and here I would use my calculator to find this specific point, four times e to the, oh, no, not this one, zero, four. Is this one going to be growth or decay before I get the next point? How you know? What's greater than one? The base. Remember, we have to take that little coefficient from the x also. So e to the third power is a growth. Now, if this had been four times e to the negative three x, this is when we'd be in a decay situation because e to the negative three would flip it over, and that would be one over e to the third. Do y'all remember that? Okay. So this is a growth situation. I'm maybe going to pick x equals 1 for my next point, which means y equals 4e cubed. And this would be on my calculator. I don't know what that gives me. Anybody? Approximately 80. So it's going way, 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 way up real fast. Um, so my asymptote is y equals zero. It says to analyze it for domain. What's the domain here? What's the range? Bracket or parentheses? Good job. Um, continuity, is it continuous? Always? Yes, it's continuous for all points on its domain. Increasing or decreasing? Always? Yes, it never stops increasing. This is a continuously increasing function because as I move from left to right, I always go up. I might be going up by a very small amount or a whole lot, but I'm always going up left to right. How about symmetry? None. How do you know? That would be odd. How about even? How do you know it's not even? That's right. Not a mirror image on either side of the y-axis. Good job, y'all. Um, is it bounded below because the asymptote keeps it from going any lower? Um, and in behavior, and let's do this with limits. As x goes to infinity, that's exactly right, goes to infinity. And what happens as x goes to negative infinity. Very good. This is, by the way, the definition of a horizontal asymptote. If you get a number, if you go to infinity or negative infinity and you just get a number, that's what it means to be a horizontal asymptote. Other questions before we start today? Stuff. Yes. Y'all want to take a short little break and then we'll get started with today's stuff? I think we're going to hold off on some of the logistic modeling and really just focus on the exponential modeling.
Jane, time we say modeling, we're talking about application type problems, which means I'm talking about what? Y'all's favorite, Alex's favorite word problems. So I'm just going to refresh you a little bit again. And we did a lot of this in Algebra 2, and I hope you remember it. Um, but this is still with our growth and decay type deal. So we had growth and decay models that we talked about. Does anybody remember what that looked like? Okay, but take the money, take the money out of it. Um, we used this basic model that was a times one plus r to the p. You remember that? What did A represent? Well, that's exactly right. That was my initial amount or what I started with. When we got into money, yes, there was. We're not gonna talk about money just yet. We're gonna focus on population today. Population. If you would like to do the application part of the population that makes uh, talking about like maximum sustainable population for an area, we will get into logistic growth. That's one plus R, yeah. What is R? The rate of growth, right? As a decimal, that's exactly right. And that's important because if you put it in there not as a decimal, you get a huge number or something, right? Um, and T is time of course and i'm not going to say that it's necessarily in years most of the time it is in years but if i have something like um, a bacteria that's doubling every hour my time would be in hours or a half-life every 30 minutes so my time would be in half hour increments so it just depends on what kind of um, units i'm using there as Well, it depends if you're looking at the growth of the decay rate per year or per day. That would have to be what your units would have to be. And so if you say that if you wanted to know after 365 days, but your rate as is, it is in years, like if you said it grew 20% per year, then you would have to convert that 365 to years per year. So your units have to be consistent is what I'm saying. So whatever units this rate is in, however, it increases every bleh then that bleh has to be what's up here also. Does that make sense? Other questions about that right now? How does that differ from, well, this is actually growth because it's bigger than one. We could have one minus R to the T and that's what? Decay, because I am less than one. So that's my key here. When my, factor here is bigger than one it is growth and when it's less than one it is decay everybody okay When this one plus R, when one plus R is greater than one, let me write it this way. What? My sign's on what? Is greater than one, it's gross. And when one plus R, is less than one. It's okay. What are y'all talking about? Oh. 
Oh, I got you. That would be the other way would be saying if one was greater or smaller, but we're comparing the one plus r. That's exactly right. So let me show you a couple examples. Let's say that I model the population of, this is San Jose, so we'll say San Jose, and find that it can be represented by 898,759 times 1.0064 to the t. So it says that it's t is in years. So every year it is either growing or decaying by that much. My question is, is the population growing in San Jose or is it declining in San Jose? And how do you know? It's growing. How do you know? It's greater than one. What percent per year is it growing? And how do you know? That's exactly right. Okay, so remember, that's an exponent. In the original equation, no, it's an exponent. I'm sorry. Start writing too big. Um, so this is telling me that I have a 1.004 growth rate here, right? But if I want to know how much is increasing per year, that annual percent increase, I have to take that one back away from it, and then I have to convert it back over to a percent. So 0 0.0064 as a percent increase. Per year. Does that make sense? Y'all remember doing this? Well, remember the original equation is 1 plus r. So I subtracted 1 so I could find out what is that r. Well, if 1 plus r is 1.0064, if I subtract 1 from both sides, I find out that r is 0 0.0064. And if r is 0 0.0064, then that means it is 0.64%. How about this one? Well, I was just telling you, so this tells you that whenever this was being measured, they started out with a population of 898,000, whatever, and that each year it increases 0.64%. And so I was given just the equation, I was just asking you to make sure you understood what the pieces were to work. Population. Oh, exponential growth in decay. This was the population in San Jose. I could have known that this was not going anywhere mathematically. Yeah. Well, for right now, as we're just getting into this, yes. Is it growth or decay and why? And what percent is it increasing or decreasing each year? We're going to do more with it. I'm just kind of getting our feet wet right now. Okay, Brett, here's Detroit. Something is definitely wrong with that toilet down there. I think it is. I don't know. What else is it? Population. When we started modeling the population or started looking at the population, it was 1.2 million. Has the population increased or decreased? Decreased. How do you know? This is less than one. So because it's less than one, that tells me this is, I'm in a D 
50K type situation. At what rate has it decreased each year? How do you know? This one plus the rate I know gives me 0.9858. So how do I find out how much it, what that rate actually is? Well, remember, right. No, 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 no. Because it's decay, because it's decay. Either way, you could do it, you can do it. You can look at it generally being always one plus R and since it's decaying, having your rate be negative, which is kind of the same thing. So either way you do it, you can do it either way. As we get a little more sophisticated, we generally just stick with the one plus R instead of the one, you see what I'm saying? And then we make our, our rate negative, but you can do it either way. Um, so this would be, what do you get? Yes. So I subtracted one and got this 0 0.0042. So you could look at this two ways, and I would say that either way is acceptable. You could say that it decays 4.2% each year. Or if you said the rate was negative point. or 2%, either one of those would work, depending on how you're looking at your equation. Does that make sense? Or by okay? The rate that it's decay, it's dropping 0.42% each year. See if you can write an equation. Good over there, Adam. Why are you sitting back there today? Yeah, but I switched him and Liza last week. Let's do one from your home Getting some of that done also. It's a 13. It's 13. What happens here? Can I write an equation for this? Sure. It's growth, but what does that mean? I'm saying per week. So you could, or even easier, what you could, let's write the equation first. What's it look like as an equation? Y equals, what's the initial amount? 18 times <laughs> you look like you're so hesitant to say it, Lily. Like you're fixing to say one, but you're. No, that's right. One plus point zero five two. My difference here is this is in weeks. So if I asked you. How tall was whatever this is that's growing at this rate? I'm going to go ahead and make this. I'm going to combine that one. Because you really want your equation to look like that when you write it. If I asked you how tall this whatever it is after one year, well, I can't plug one in for T because my units have to be consistent. Because I'm per week in my rate, I also need to be in weeks in my time. So at one year, what would T be? 
So see how we're making sure those are consistent? I think that was the question you asked earlier, Brett. And this one just asks that you determine the exponential function that satisfies the condition. It doesn't ask you to go through in this set um, and find a specific value, but just in case you have to do that a little later. Everybody okay? Before we move to the hard stuff. Weeks, weeks. If your rate is given in decades, yes. Yeah, but you don't want to convert 5.2. You want to keep whatever your rate is, you want to keep that unit. Because it's exponential growth, it's going to be hard to convert that over to what that would be for decades. Why? So then why don't you just plug in in 10 years, 10 times 52 would be 520. Plug in 520 for your T and figure it out. Okay, um, a couple things to note. If you see something like doubling, what does that mean your R is? Is it two? It increases by how much each time if it doubles. If you have five by itself, so it's a hundred percent increase. Now the two is correct if you think about the one plus r. That's going to be two. But your rate itself is a hundred percent. It's growing a hundred percent each year, or it's growing a hundred percent each. Year. For example, suppose a culture of a hundred bacteria is put into a petri dish and the culture doubles every hour um predict when the number of bacteria will be 350,000 and this we would use our calculator for but let's set up the let's set up the equation first what is my initial amount? A hundred times, well, my one plus R is going to be two because I take a hundred percent every hour, right? Two raised to the T. What is What units would my T be in? Hours, because it doubles every hour. And the question is saying, when will that be 350? Yeah. Well, you do one plus one, which gives you two. Because your rate, if it's doubling your rate to 100%, which means your R is one, so one plus R would give you two. Y'all okay there? If I needed to solve this for T, any ideas how I would do that if I could use my calculator? Nobody? Can I do that? Sure. So when is 2 to the t equal to 3500? Zero, zero? We could use some logs here. Do you remember about the logs? I'm going to go with no. Say it again, Adam. But what is it in exponential form? What good does that do me here? Close. B to the x equals A because logs always equal exponents. So I could use that method and I could say, well, this is the same thing as log base 2 of 3,500 and I could use my calculator here. We will get to some logs a little bit later on, so don't worry if you don't remember all that. Right now, what you could do is you could use your calculator. I'm going to focus back on this equation. Um, 
I am going to make that equation equal zero. I always forget how I have to. There we go. So I would just graph it. I would, I'd go into y equals and I'd type that equation 2 to the t minus 3500. Of course, we're using x here. And it may not show me anything in this window. I may have to adjust this window. I don't need any negatives because, of course, I'm talking about time and bacteria doubling. Um, minus 3,500. I'm going to take my X maybe out to 100. And that may not be enough. I don't know yet. Oh, and it was enough. See where it's crossing there? Y'all remember solving by graphing? We did it at the very beginning again, too, of this class. Um, second, calculate that zero. Less found. Right down. About 11. Did y'all get that on yours? Do you remember how to do that? Don't remember how? All right, so remember wherever it crosses, all right, if we make the equation equal zero, we can find where it crosses the x axis in order to find the solution. So all I did was made my equation equal zero, and that's what I'm graphing. Okay. And now what I want to do is I want to make sure that I can see the piece of the graph I need to see. So I go into window and do some adjusting here. And then I want to second trace and find that zero. And when you find that zero, remember you have to go to the left of the zero and then you have to go to the right of the zero and then you hit enter to find that value. Say that again. Um, so I usually look at these numbers here. Like I was looking, I was watching that X value as I was going left bound. I know, I know it crosses somewhere in here and I took this up to like 100. So at 5, I'm definitely over here somewhere, so I hit enter. And now I see my little arrow that popped up. That tells me that's where it was on the graph whenever I hit enter. So now I keep going right, and I need to go right until I've crossed over somewhere here. So I'm watching these X values as I go right. I'm at 20. I'm just going to make sure I go past it. So 30 is probably somewhere over here. I'm past it now, and I hit Enter. So now it's telling me it's going to look between these two arrows. It's going to look for anywhere it crosses the X axis between those two arrows. So I hit Enter, and it'll give me that value. So we go back to the problem we were on, and it says, when will, when will the bacteria reach 300,000? Well, when T is approximately 11, so we were in hours, so in 11 hours, your bacteria will have grown from 100 bacteria to 350,000 bacteria. And y'all have done this in science, right? Haven't y'all done half-lives and doubling and... Okay. 11 hours. 
yeah, 11 hours. That's okay. Um, one other little thing to show you before I show you regression. Um, if it says half-life, so doubling, we let R be 1, so that 1 plus R was 2. What about half-life? What does that tell me? What's my rate here? Point 0.5 or negative point 0.5 if you are doing the 1 plus R. So my equation would be A times point 0.5 to the T. Because it's a decay, so it would be 1 minus R because you're cutting in half every whatever. Y'all okay there? Because 1 minus 0.5. All right, quickly, let me show you the regression models and I will be done. Calculator. And we are going to run through. Of 19. I'm going to do number two. I got plenty of time. All right, number 20. If you look at number 20, I have this set of, can y'all see that? Set of data, right? I'm going to input this in the exact same way I did. Remember when we were doing the scatter plots and we went stat edit and we typed them in there? I'm going to do this the same way. So I'm going to do my X here, and because I'm doing number 20 for G of X, I'm going to choose this for my Y for right now. So if you'll go ahead and go into Stat Edit, so Stat Edit, and then List 1. Remember, if you want to clear everything out of there, hit Clear and Enter. Go up to the title of the list, clear and enter, and we're going to enter this in. So I've got negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And I'm going to enter that information for the G of X. So negative 9.0625. Negative 7.25. Negative 5.8. Negative 4.64 and negative 3.7123. Just so you see, you won't have to actually do this. You'll just be writing the equation for your homework. But just so you see what this looks like, I'm going to go into my stat plot and turn it on so you can see this graph against each other. Definitely doesn't look linear. You can see it taking some curve here. So what I want to do is I want to go stat, calculate. Exponential regression. I know what's going on. There's two negative one. Should have made it different.
Question two. Right, I'm sure this makes you happy. Okay, I've got to fix this. So I'm going to start. Right. 